Now, wing fighter airmen who have been in Afghanistan for months are home tonight. We'll share a Monroe man's story. And as Veterans Day nears, a traveling wall is remembering local members of the military. Plus, the Badgers snap their losing streak barely. We have reaction from Camp Randall. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now at 10. Thanks for joining News 3 Now at 10. I'm Amanda Quintana. Hundreds of military members are back home with family and friends tonight after the 115th fighter wing returned to Madison this evening. Governor Tony Evers and Mayor Satya Rhodes Conway were on hand to welcome them back after the fighter wing returned from Afghanistan, where they'd been for nearly four months. During their time overseas, they logged over 4,500 hours in the air. Their return, a special moment for friends and family members who haven't seen their loved ones in months. Adam Duxter shows us why today's reunion means so much to them. Yeah, well, Amanda, tears, hugs, and more than 100 happy families who say they are glad to welcome their loved ones back safe and sound. As hundreds of families gathered at Truex Field, Joanne Whedon had one person on her mind. Robert is 22. He actually just had a birthday last week. Um, um, enlisted in the Air National Guard as a junior in high school. Her son, Robert who left with the 115th Fighter Wing for Afghanistan last July. The Whedons are a military family. For Robert's girlfriend, Rebecca, his departure took some getting used to. It was definitely a big change. I didn't really realize how much I relied on him for things until he left. And while they've texted and called, that won't compare to what's coming next. Just his presence. I think that's been the biggest thing that I've missed, just kind of being able to hold his hand or hug him or just have him there. One by one, each of the 200 airmen <laughs> welcomed back with open arms. Hey. Until it was finally Robert's turn to come home and be with his mom, dad, and girlfriend once again. The Whedons are returning to their hometown of Monroe tonight, and they're going to go to one of Robert's favorite restaurants. And mom says they've got some nachos waiting for them there. And she says it's moments like this that remind us the sacrifices these men and women make to keep us safe. Happy to see them all come home. Thank you so much, Adam. Monday is Veterans Day and a traveling memorial wall is on display at the Watertown Library. Remembering Our Fallen honors 150 of Wisconsin's military who have died in the war on terror since September 11th. Today, the veterans of foreign wars post 3709 hosted a ceremony honoring those veterans. They're hoping Americans take a moment to remember those who fought for our freedom and didn't make it home. They sacrificed their lives to keep our country free. And it's a sad thing to see all these veterans that passed, that gave all. Hey, we raise our right hand and we write that ultimate check, that blank check that says everything up to our, our lives. And we do it because we care. We love our country. That's why we do it. The traveling memorial wall will be on display at the Watertown Library through next week. Let's get a look at your first alert weather with Dave Caulfield. I know Monday's temperatures could break a record, Dave. <laughs> yeah, Monday night into Tuesday morning. That's when the core of that cold air will be back as another Arctic blast on the way. But before we get there, we have to talk about the possibility of some light snow late tomorrow. There have been some light showers out and about this evening. Just uh, getting the car windshield wet, and that's about it. So really not impacting us. Don't be surprised, though, if we do see maybe a few more sprinkles or flurries overnight. Not really anything showing up right now except for the clouds in Madison and the Edgewater Skycan. Tem temperatures are still in the mid-30s and even some 40s showing up closer to the state line. will fall slowly through the 30s under cloudy skies tonight. And again, there may be a quick shower or uh, snow shower tomorrow morning, but most of us will stay dry and just cloudy with highs in the mid 30s, so a little bit colder tomorrow. We'll talk about the possibilities of that light snow, plus the cold on the way in your first alert forecast in just a few minutes. Thank you, Dave. During halftime of today's Badger game, the Badger Band performed a military-themed show. Check out some of the photos of that show, courtesy of Ryan Wubin. The band honored the Army, Air Force, Navy, Marines, and Coast Guard during their performance. As for the football team, the Badgers rebounded from their two-game losing streak to beat the Iowa Hawkeyes this afternoon, 24-22. Jay Wilson has more from Camp Randall. 
The Badgers' two-game losing streak is over, but it was a tough grind him out 24-22 win over Iowa here at Camp Randall Stadium. After Colin Larch kicked a field goal to give the Badgers a 24-16 lead, Iowa took one play to respond with 3-12 left as Tyrone Tracy got a 75-yard touchdown pass from Nate Stanley to make it 24-22. The two-point conversion that looked like Stanley might get it, but Chris Orr met him at the goal line and turned him back to keep it a two-point Badger lead. And then Jonathan Taylor and the offensive line helped ice the game from there. Taylor rushed for 130 yards in the fourth quarter, 250 in the game, and the Badgers won to move their season record to 7-2 and two overall and 4-2 and two in the Big Ten. Coming up, we'll hear from the Badgers on their 24-22 win over Iowa. At Camp Randall Stadium, Jay Wilson, News 3 Now Sports. Meanwhile, President Trump took aim today at impeachment hearings set to start next week and suggested he may release a White House summary of a second call to Ukraine's president on Tuesday. CBS News' Weijia Zhang has the latest from the White House. The president touted the economy and slammed the impeachment inquiry as he left the White House for the LSU versus Alabama college football game. So the stock market hit an all-time high yesterday. The country is doing really well. The witch hunt continues. President Trump also said he's willing to release the transcript of an April phone call he had with the Ukraine leader, probably on Tuesday. You'll tell me if you think there's anything wrong with it. That call after Volodymyr Zelensky's election victory came months before their July phone conversation that sparked the impeachment inquiry. Investigators are trying to determine if President Trump abused his power by pressuring Ukraine to investigate Joe Biden and his son Hunter. House Republicans sent a letter Saturday to Adam Schiff, the chairman of the Intelligence Committee, requesting witnesses they want to call during public hearings that begin next week. Hunter Biden, the whistleblower, and anyone relied on by the whistleblower in drafting the complaint are on the list. Democrats can overrule any of the witnesses. In a statement, Schiff said his committee is evaluating the request, but warned this inquiry is not and will not serve, however, as a vehicle to undertake the same sham investigation into the Bidens or 2016 that the president pressed Ukraine to conduct. At the game in Tuscaloosa, the president received a warm response from the crowd. Weijia Jang, CBS News, the White House. The hearings kick off Wednesday with testimony from two key witnesses, Bill Taylor, the acting top diplomat in Ukraine, and State Department Deputy George Kent. Acting White House Chief of Staff Mick Mulvaney is trying to join a lawsuit fighting House subpoena power. If he's allowed to join that lawsuit, it could effectively derail him from giving testimony in the impeachment inquiry until a federal court decides that case. Mulvaney did not appear for his scheduled testimony on Friday, despite him getting a subpoena. That's because the White House told him he should not appear, claiming that legally he's immune. The lawsuit is not set to be resolved for several weeks. Leaders from Central and Eastern Europe are gathering in Berlin today for services, commemorations and celebrations to mark 30 years since the fall of the wall that divided East and West Berlin. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. German Chancellor Angela Merkel and leaders took part in a commemoration ceremony visiting the Berlin Wall Memorial and lighting candles at that national memorial for the victims of communist violence. Yesterday, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo helped unveil a statue of President Ronald Reagan. More local news now. Governor Evers is proposing a plan that raises state employees' minimum wage to $15. The Evers administration quietly released its state employee compensation plan for the next three years yesterday. It calls for raising all permanent state workers minimum wage to $15 an hour beginning next June. It also calls for a 2% salary increase in raises for prison guards. Evers administration says the entire package will cost about $84 million, but that plan is subject to legislative approval. The Wisconsin Assembly is under fire from the Freedom From Religion Foundation over a resolution to recognize Thanksgiving week as, quote, National Bible Week in Wisconsin. The Assembly is set to vote on the resolution on Tuesday. According to a news release from the FFRF, the resolution would endorse Christianity over other religions and declare non-Christians as second-class citizens. The Republican lawmaker's resolution says, quote, Bible reading has been a great encouragement and comfort for many people throughout our state's history and has contributed to the molding of the spiritual, moral, and social fiber of our citizenry. 
The FFRF says the Bible promotes conduct that would be disapproved of by modern society. Still ahead on News 3 Now at 10, we'll take you to a entrepreneur fair in Stoughton, except you aren't going to find very long resumes on any of the inventors. We'll explain after the break. From paintings to jewelry, people can shop at more than 130 booths at this year's Winter Art Fair off the square. The artists are coming from all over Wisconsin to sell their artwork. In its 30th year, event organizers say it's the artist's holiday spirit that keeps the fair going. And that fair continues tomorrow at the Monona Terrace until 4 o'clock. Entrepreneurs from around the state are selling their best products and ideas at a unique business fair in Stoughton. Our photo photojournalist Emily Burdett has more. Find a problem, get a solution, boom. What starts as an idea. They are actually in charge. It is turning into a profit. From start to finish, entrepreneurs are selling handmade items at today's business fair. But all 34 entrepreneurs are under the age of 15. People sort of treat you older than you are because like you're a business owner, so they get to talk to you about your products and you get to meet cool people. And I mean, I, of course you make money too, so it's just a win-win. The Children's Business Fair teaches kids ages 6 to 14 how to sell, market, and display their products. These are felt flowers and we put them like in shoes or different areas that don't smell too good and we add some pizzazz. I've gone here every year. It's fun just talking to people, meeting new people, selling my products. Those skills transfer to great employee skills because they're still going to be the ones that are going to solve the problems, are good communicators. New this year, the fair is adding a training program. The kids train for financial planning and business communication and development. After the products are ready to be sold, judges from the high school business club, DECA, rate the kids' businesses. Um, we had three criteria. It was originality, and then visual presentation and verbal presentations. Although they may not all grow up to become professional, 
professional entrepreneurs. Today's program is still helping them with important life skills. Being introverted, it's nice to sort of put myself out there. Learning how to run a business and like be able to be a leader. In its third year, organizers are already planning for next year's fair. They say that's because of so much interest, they will have to find an even bigger venue next time. A first of its kind table tennis tournament is in Madison today. The Madison Table Tennis Club hosted its first statewide competition, inviting six teams from across Wisconsin to the Eastside Community Center. President of the Madison Club, Tom Running, says today's event was the brainchild of the Wausau Club's leader and that bragging rights are now certainly at stake. The state is so spread out and the clubs don't get a chance to mix their players very often. So we're saying, hey, let's use this as an opportunity for uh, club building community throughout the state. Running says his favorite thing about table tennis is the diversity of its competitors. Today's tournament had players as young as 15 years old and as old as 60. It felt a little bit warmer this morning as Girls on the Run hosted its annual 5K. The after school group for third through fifth graders celebrated the end of its fall season at the run. Girls on the Run raises money for scholarships, but today's focus was on the nearly 700 girls around Dane County who are learning how running and being physically fit can improve someone's confidence. And for these girls, the finish line is just the beginning. This event proves that they can do hard things, especially when they train and work together as a team. So the event is really just a celebration of all that's to come for our girls. Girls on the Run also distributed 60 pairs of shoes and other running clothing items to ensure that girls could safely participate in the year-round program. The Madison Half and Full Marathons return tomorrow morning starting at the Capitol. Runners will go through the UW Arboretum, UW Campus and Warner Park before returning back to the Capitol. Drivers are encouraged to plan ahead for delays along the race route. A full list of road closures is on the City of Madison's website. Well, it sounds like they're going to have to bundle up a little bit tomorrow, Dave. Yeah, temperature's not too bad, Amanda, but we're starting off right around 30 degrees tomorrow morning, and there could be a stray shower or maybe even some flurries tomorrow, but really not expected to impact uh, much of anyone. Nevertheless, uh, those runners may be dealing with a few flakes uh, tomorrow. And then we also could see a few more flakes, some light snow possible Sunday night into Monday. There's still a hefty amount of uncertainty exactly where that band will set up. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. And speaking of the marathon, we all know winter across southern Wisconsin, not a sprint, but a marathon. And we are getting the next leg of that as we get into Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday as more unseasonable cold on the way. Madison on the WIC TV Skycam, nothing falling right now. We did see some uh, light showers roll through briefly this evening, but just clouds right now. 42 degrees the high today, so closer to where we should be for this time of year but still below normal. So every single day so far this month has been below normal and a couple of days have been well below normal. Temperature departures of 21 and 22 over the last couple of days before today's minus five. So our monthly temperature departure so far is 12 degrees below uh, where we typically would be for this time of year. And it looks like these below normal temperatures are going to continue into much of next week as well. After that, maybe some hope on the horizon. Doppler track is uh, showing not too much in the way of activity across southern Wisconsin, but again, a few flurries possible tonight into the overnight hours. Our high temperature outlook, that does say high, right? It's supposed to be higher temperatures than uh, we're used to, but we're uh, pretty low on our temperature scale for Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, about 20 to 25 degrees below where we typically would be for this time of year. And our low temperatures could break some records. We're in the single digits and we could feel like below zero as we start the day on Tuesday. So on future track, we're pretty quiet as we head into tomorrow morning. We're near 30 degrees again, a few flurries, maybe a quick shower, not out of the question tomorrow morning, but most of the day should be just mostly cloudy with temperatures in the mid 30s. Here's where the uncertainty comes in a little bit, folks. We need to sort of still pin down where exactly this band of snow is going to set up right now. I have that uh, forming close to the state line. So spots like Beloit, maybe even into Janesville, Monroe, picking up some snow tomorrow night into early Monday morning where Madison may just see some flurries. If this forms a little bit farther north, we could be talking about at least some minor impacts for the morning commute on Monday for Madison. So we'll have to keep a close eye on that. We're not talking about anything major when it comes to accumulations. 
everywhere should pick up less than an inch, even if that band does form a little bit farther north. But speaking of major impacts, <laughs> though, those are on the way for Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday with those cold could break some records early on Tuesday. And also as we head into uh, the day on Tuesday, we won't really get out of the low 20s. We're barely getting to 20 degrees for the high. So alert days in the forecast Monday through Wednesday. But it does look like those temperatures slowly but surely moderate back to near 40 degrees by next Saturday. There's some good news in that. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. Mm -hmm. Coming up on News 3 Now at 10, Wisconsin still has a chance to win the Big Ten West. Melissa's got highlights next. All right, so it is a tight race at the top of the Big Ten West with Minnesota at the top. We'll get to them in a little bit, but for second place, deadlocked between Wisconsin and Iowa. So stakes were high today along with the prize of the Heartland Trophy, which has been making its home here in Madison for the last three years. We pick it up in the second quarter. Jack Cohn handing it off to Danny Davis, the running back apparently. 17 yards and a dive, and Wisconsin is good for six. Badgers take the 7-3 lead. The defense holding the Hawkeyes to a field goal, and then the same duo except going with a position on the roster this time. Cohn to Davis for the four-yard score. 14 to 6 Wisconsin. Now the receiver core really showing up today. Third quarter now Cone airing it out to Quintez Cephas. That is a 52 yard completion. Then two plays later it'll be Cone to Cephas again. This time 
for a touchdown. 21 to 6 Wisconsin. Now this one got close at the end, but the Badgers hang on to win and the Heartland Trophy getting pretty comfortable here in Madison. Wisconsin keeps it for the fourth straight year. Jay Wilson wraps up our coverage from Camp Randall. Three weeks ago, the Badgers were ranked six in the country with a 6-0 record, but then losses at Illinois and Ohio State changed things, so they really needed a win, and they got it today against Iowa. You know, it's, it's a true test. You know, it's not like you just played you know, some lower division team. So it, it's great to get a win, you know, especially after a bye week and then two losses before that. We, we talked about having a good bye week and um, taking advantage of the time we had to get better. And we did that, and then it led into a good week of practice um, for, before this game, and we were able to do some good things. Jonathan Taylor and the offensive line had their struggles against Illinois and Ohio State, but boy, did they turn that around today, especially in the fourth quarter, as Taylor helped run out the clock, rushing for a game-high 250 yards. I know I talked about it in previous weeks of being able to be more patient and allow those guys to, to work up to the next level. And I feel like we did a good job of doing that today. You know, two-point game, four minutes. I mean, you got to make sure that you're on. You got to make sure that you're moving those chains. Every day uh, he comes and you know you're going to get his best. And, and certainly, you know, the competitive problem, I think it affects maybe all around him as much, if not more, than, than JT. If the Badgers are going to win the Big Ten West, they're still going to need a little help. In fact, Paul Chris was asked if he's now going to cheer for Iowa against Minnesota next week, and Chris just said, I'll just worry about our guys. At Camp Randall Stadium, Jay Wilson, News 3 Now Sports. And Jonathan Taylor with 250 yards on the ground, second time this season that he's rushed for more than 200. And next week, off to Nebraska. Just announced tonight that game will kick off at 11 a.m. Now, speaking of Minnesota, hosting Penn State in the battle of the undefeated. We pick it up in the second quarter. Tanner Morgan aiming for the sideline, connects with Tyler Johnson. He'll stay in Minnesota up 21 to 10. About a minute to go in the game. Sean Clifford trying to give the Nittany Lions something to cheer about here, but picked off by Jordan Howden. Clifford threw three interceptions against the Gophers and P.J. Fleck going surfing in the locker room after the game today in Minnesota, proving that they are indeed for reals. Beating Penn State 31 to 26, Gophers are now 9 and 0 for the first time since 1904. Little different story between Maryland and Ohio State. No Chase Young for the Buckeyes today. Second quarter action, Justin Fields to Chris Olave. Where? Where's everybody? He's by himself. No one around him. 28 to nothing. Buckeyes fields through for 200 yards and three scores today. Later, J.K. Dobbins, 20 yards to the house. One of his two touchdowns on the day. Ohio State running up that scoreboard. 73 to 14, the final. The Rona Boys soccer team making its first ever appearance at state in program history facing Nina. We pick it up in the 13th minute. Gannon Simonette to Elliot Popkowitz. Short diagonal into the box. Nice shot there. one nothing Wildcats. Then Jonathan Gamez, all by himself, crosses to the corner for his 13th goal of the season. 2 nothing Verona. That would be the final Wildcats win their first state title in program history. Going to be a fun bus ride back from Milwaukee tonight. We'll be right back.
Here's your 10 day forecast temperatures in the mid 30s. Tomorrow could have some light snow late Sunday into Monday and then alert days galore from Monday to Wednesday for some very cold temperatures. And we have an alert day on the desk here in terms of ice because Amanda is engaged. I am engaged. I'm getting married. It's very exciting. We figured we'd Oh, show on some good news. Congrats to you and Justin. Yay! Yay. So good exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Have a great night.